G'day and welcome to RC Model Reviews and the 3.3 FPV video system from Hobby Wireless. Hobby Wireless, they sent that in for review. Now, as you know, 3.3 gigahertz band or 3.4 gigahertz, it's not legal in all countries and most countries have to have a ham license to use it if it's legal at all. So, I was not about to go out there and strap a 1 watt transmitter to a plane flight around on a frequency that could interfere with other users and get me into trouble. Of course not. I'm not that silly and I'm, you know, try to obey the regulations where I can. But if I was going to test out this video system, what I would do is I would put an attenuator on the output to reduce the power level. I'd do that for two reasons. Firstly, it significantly reduces the risk of interfering with another user of the spectrum and uh, also it makes you less of a target. But also it enables you to test things out because this is a one watt transmitter. One watt, that's a lot of power. So in theory, you'd have to break another regulation by flying beyond visual line of sight, at least in this country, in order to test it out properly. So if I was going to test it, this is what I'd do. I would put a 20 decibel attenuator on this video transmitter. And then I would fly it on my AXM and I'd see what it's like with just 10 milliwatts. Of power because if you put a 20 decibel attenuator on a 1 watt transmitter you get the equivalent of 10 milliwatts coming out the end and that's next to nothing it's bugger all in fact but if i did this is what the video would look like So as you can see in that video, the colours were a bit screwed up at times and it was a bit grainy, but that's what 10 milliwatts at 3.3 gigahertz would give you in terms of range. And it, was out, it would be out to four or 500 metres and still flyable. So that's quite impressive, really, quite impressive. Now, the next thing I would do if I was going to test this thing in the air is I would take out the 20 decibel attenuator that gave us one hundredth of a watt and I'd put in a 10 decibel attenuator, which would give us one tenth of a watt. So 
100 milliwatts, the equivalent of 100 milliwatts. And I would fly it again, and it would probably look something like this. Now you notice there that if I'd flown the plane with 100 milliwatts at 3.3 gigs, the range was vastly improved. The, the quality of the image at range was much better. There was still some dropouts, but that's what happens with FPV signals. But the, the colour was better, it was more consistent, there was less patterning, and there was less grain, less snow on the image, less noise. So remember that would still be one tenth of the actual power output of this transmitter. So if you multiply, you know, the difference between the first one and the second one was a power of 10, was 10 times. Imagine doing 10 times again, and that's what the transmitter would run with no attenuator at all. But even I would not fly it like that because, you know, as I say, um, one watt of power on that band, we don't know what else is out there, and we don't want to interfere with anybody, and you don't need it. Honestly, you don't need it. They sent the one watt transmitter because that's what they produced first of all. It was probably quicker and easier for them to do that. But I think for manufacturing, for production, they'd sell an awful lot more of the 100 or 200 milliwatt ones. Because as you can see, 100 milliwatts on 3.4 or 3.3 gigahertz seems to give you about the same range as 200 milliwatts on 5.8, which is pretty much what I expected. So if you can get by with 200 milliwatts on 5.8 for your mini quads or your other flying, FPV flying, then a 100 milliwatt 3 gigahertz system would do the same. You'd get pretty much the same results. Um, and a 200 milliwatt one would be even better but still the power levels are low, you're not going to be interfering with people. And that's important because being on a handband, you know, you've got to cooperate with other users of that band. You don't want to go splattering all over the, the nearby hams who are trying to do something on the same frequencies. It's a case of cooperating on the spectrum and you know, basically taking care that you don't annoy people. So there you go, if I was going to fly this transmitter, that's the way things would look. And uh, 
yeah. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the bench. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at it. Let's rip it apart, tear it down, see what's inside, see how they've done things. I have a feeling that it's going to look pretty much like their 1.2 gigahertz stuff. They've just changed the phase lock loop and a bit of the uh, circuitry to work at high frequency. But I don't know for sure. Have a look and see. There you go. If you've got questions, comments, put them on the bottom of this video. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm going to get back to the bench. Lots to do before Christmas. Bye for now.